Welcome to the Yoshi Football Show. This is John Johnston of CornNation.com. We're here with Yoshi Hardrick, who's throwing the bones already. Former Husker offensive lineman and CFL football star. We're talking about yesterday's Nebraska win over Purdue. The Boilermakers go down 37-27. to 27. It's a double-digit win for Nebraska. Their second of the season, you're throwing the bones. I, I thought offensive – can offensive linemen do that without getting in trouble? Man, we're a family. I, I love that we can throw. I got a reason to throw the bones, man. If you if you watch this defense yesterday or the last couple of weeks, we have a reason to throw the bones. We had a team held to negative two rushing yards. I'll just start with that. <laughs> so it's a reason to throw the bones. Yeah, but they didn't even – Purdue really didn't even try to run the ball, though. But you're still, as an offensive lineman, you're happy with the – what, like you said, no rushing yards whatsoever. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very happy with it because um, they didn't, they didn't, I say they only had about 15 to 20 carries, but still at the end of the day, negative rushing yards. The running back had seven carries. So they didn't, they didn't try to run it down our throat, but they did give it to them and we stopped it when they did. So we made them one dimensional, basically. We made them one dimensional and then, and I got some stats on that also. If you take away that 89 yard pass, man, that defense played a that defense played a hell of a game. That is true. They, on the defensive side of the ball, let's start there because you did. Uh, we left our cornerbacks on a single coverage most of this game against two guys that are NFL level players, David Bell and Rondell Moore. That's what I saw, and and we. We didn't rush five guys all the time, and we didn't, you know, blitz a whole lot, but we did do single man coverage and man coverage quite a bit. Uh, is that what you saw from our cornerbacks and our defensive yes, backs? I, I was very impressed. I love the way the defensive back plays. Cam Taylor, um, Boodle, Williams, this, this breach, um, they was aggressive. They played the ball. They was on the receivers. It wasn't a lot of space. It was, they was competing for the ball every time the ball was in the air. And that, that just got my juices flowing. We um, getting pressure on the quarterback. Like you said, they were going against two future NFL receivers. And they was on an island by themselves. They went from deep to long to medium shots. They was right on the hips. We swatted balls away. Cam Taylor Britt made a couple plays that remind me of Alfonso Denard. And just the way he was floating in the air, just the way he was knocking balls away. And it was it was impressive. I was like, that's some big-time football he played today. Did you – their quarterback looked like he – well, number one, he didn't handle pressure very well. No. Number two, he looked like he could he could do zone. In other words, when we went into a zone, he was able to stand back. If he didn't get under pressure, he was able to complete some passes. If we went into a man coverage, uh, he couldn't find man coverage, I don't think at all am i reading that wrong or is that it was great it was great i think it was easy when we got in zone he found the spots when we got in man he had to throw guys open and i feel like he struggled with that we was right in the hip pocket or the ball was overthrown or we was knocking the ball down or i don't know it it was lovely to see man before the 89 yard pass like i said bell had nine receptions for 43 yards he was averaging 4.7 yards a catch now you put in this 89 yard pass, he got 10 for 132. Still, still it's impressive, but nine for 43, he was only averaging four yards a catch. Then you look at Rondell, he had 13 receptions for 78 yards. He only averaged six yards a catch. That is great pass defense, if you ask me. What did you see from our offensive line? Or wait, wait a minute, let's stay on the defensive vibe. What did you see from Purdue's defensive line? I mean, Lorenzo Neal is a giant man, human in the middle. Uh, they were missing their defensive end due to COVID that uh, was an All-American last year. But what did, what did you see from Purdue's defensive line? Our offensive line handled them pretty well. Yeah, I just want to say, I, I didn't have a lot of guys that stood out for me on Purdue defensive line. Uh, I saw the big guys. I saw number nine, like you said, Lorenzo Neal. I saw the big guys. But, man, Mills, when he wanted to get downhill, he had space. When Martinez wanted to throw the ball, I seen him a couple times. He went through his fourth read, and Rondell was hit on the sideline. Like, 
after he hadn't looked at like four different pl- four different ways, and Rondell got hit on the left sideline for a big pass down the uh, field. Um, I think they only got one sack, so it was a good day, man. I, if you ask me, man, that was the most balanced our offense has looked since I've watched all year. I love, I love with Martinez at quarterback a little bit more. He's a mobile quarterback. He's starting to pass the ball a little better. With a downhill running back, it makes Wondell that much more special. If he gets in the backfield, we can do we can do a lot with him back there. But as far as him as a receiver, with Mills in the backfield, I don't know what Rundell went for. I think he had nine catches for 100-plus. And that's the player we need for him. And with a mobile quarterback and a downhill, a downhill running back and a receiver that you can put anywhere and get 100 yards out of, that makes it hard for a defense to stop. And I, I think we looked good, right? We looked good on O yesterday, man. Okay, Dedrick Mills, Dedrick Mills had 16 carries for 62 yards, which is only a 3.8 yard average. We did not, we ran sideways a lot. Yes. We didn't run north and south like people like to say. What, why did we do that? Uh, I wish I knew, but. (laughs) <laughs> I just remember I, I remember the couple power plays that a couple ISO plays that when we needed that that Mills he hit it he hit it north and south for but the six and the eight yards. And that's what I was excited for. But far as going north and south, I, I think the coaches think we had more speed. We was playing faster. We were a little fa- I think we was a faster team, and that was a game plan this week. And if you look out the season, we didn't have we haven't had a downhill running back. So I think we just went with our bread and butter. We're a little faster. We do a lot of sweeps. And that's that's what the game plan is going to, I think. But yeah, I didn't know he didn't average four yards a carry, but just from watching the game, it didn't look like that. Man, I always <laughs> talk about I always talk about the average. So when you gave me that average, I was kind of a little shocked. 16 for 60 for 3.8. Yeah. It didn't look like that, but at the end of the day, man, I saw bodies getting moved around. I saw lanes and I saw Martinez with time to throw. So I think we gave up one sack. Well, how many did you get us down? I gave I gave, think we gave up one sack. Yeah, we did. We the official stats so show one sack for them. Uh, I think we had three. Cameron Jurgens didn't have any snap issues that I saw whatsoever. So, was, do we? Hey. And he has. Point? He's playing right in front of Lorenzo Neal, who is going to be an NFL player. I mean, and Lorenzo Neal is going to be drafted. He's going to make it in the league. Uh, I did Cameron Jurgens just suddenly come together. What what do you think might have changed there to make this that much better? Oh man, it gave me confidence. I I wish I knew, but I just think the growing pains and everything Scott Frost is telling us to be patient and fifty one is going to be one of the one of the best ever play here. I think we saw a little glimpse of it. I don't want to put him in the Hall of Fame. I don't want to give him the Husker Ring of Honor right now. But we was looking for a game like that. It's been a rough couple of weeks for him to bounce back like that. Them the type of players we're going to need to turn the things, the, um, this program around. And that's that's great coming from a center. Being a spotlight, you can't hide when you're a center and you're having bad snaps. So it, it wasn't a thing. He was hiding. He he embraced it. He came back. And it was great to see Jurgens and Martinez within the last couple of weeks, the way they have responded. I just I would just want to tip my hats to uh, Martinez, man. He's he's playing some good ball, man. If if you've been watching, man, Martinez is playing some good ball. He made a couple great runs. He making some good throws. We're going downfield, do poopy. We're going downfield. We're right. throwing the ball downfield. So, man, that's an offensive guy. I can I can be. I'm just proud of the guys, man. Okay, we're gonna have to switch to the negatives for a little bit. I know you're exceedingly happy with this. Penalties. Good yeah. Lord. Both of these teams just – they were so much stupidity in this game at times that it was amazing. And there was a lot of trash talking from what I saw on both sides of the ball. This game started out and it didn't seem that bad, but then you got two penalties against Nebraska uh, on the sideline. It looked like, uh, I can't remember who it was, gave one of their guys a little bit of a shove into the bench, and then another guy's talking trash on the sideline. What is with all the trash talking that went on in that game? Where do you think Um, that came from? 
I don't want to be, I don't want to say this, but from being on the football field and from being on a bad team and playing another bad team, I'm not going to say we're a bad team and they're a bad For playing two teams that don't, doesn't have a great record at the time, I've been there. But two frustrated teams, two teams that just got bad taste in their mouth were coming to work and working hard, were not getting the results. And I don't know if it was frustration or like I got wrote down in my notes. I love the bully ball aspect that Deontay Williams was playing. Even though he got a couple pills, he hit a couple guys late. He had his head on people. He was talking trash. He had his heart on his sleeve. He was he was there to bully people. So I liked it that I liked it that the attitude that we coming in here to take over the stadium and we're coming in here to hit you guys. But at the end of the day, we can't be we can't have those penalties. But I did like I have in my notes. The defense, I saw swagger and I saw attitude. Yeah, we had a couple. We had a couple penalties, but we wanted to be bullies. So, yeah, we have to find a way to ride that line. We're not getting penalties, but we still let them know we're we're big brother. I, how do coaches do that? I that that's the one thing that I mystified by. I know that you know. All the old guys like me will go, yeah, you got to yell at them. And then you got to run them for eight miles during practice until they fall down, puke and nearly die and da, 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 da. How do coaches keep the aggressiveness in a football player without making sure that they are going over the line into dumb, stupid penalties like that? Where, how do they do that? How do they manage that process? Oh, uh, from my, from my experience, it came from teaching and learning. It comes from, um, Coming into the film room, like our coach is teaching us to be aggressive. He's teaching us how he wants us to play. Then he comes in and he shows us how much a penalty hurt us in the game. He comes in and shows us how selfish things, how selfish penalties can be. He comes in and shows us if we lose a game and you look at this, we lost 15 yards here, we would have kicked the field goal. So he so he shows us so many situations where penalties hurt us. And but he lets us know it's it's the right way to play the game and it's the right way to not take a penalty. And basically he keeps us aggressive, but he shows us what penalties can do and how it can hurt us. And I think that from me being a pro football player and that just showing us that and letting us know the games come down to inches and you never know when you're gonna score, you don't wanna take those penalties, you don't wanna let your brothers down, you don't wanna be the guy. Because just walking and playing pro sports, you walk on eggshells every day. You don't know when you're going to get cut. You don't know when you're going to get traded. So it's one of those things. I don't want to be one of those guys that I have a penalty target on my back or I have a lot of penalties because it makes that decision a lot more easier. And that, that's how I learned from when I was in pro sports. Seeing the guys make a lot of penalties, next thing he knows, he's selling cars again in America and we in Canada. <laughs> so that makes you think about penalties a lot more different. If you're if you was in my situation in Canada, see a guy's making a lot of penalties two weeks on I, on Instagram, you see him selling cards in America. You think twice about hitting somebody late after the play or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I never thought it from thought about it from that perspective, but it's very uh, yeah, very bottom line ish, you know. You, you yes. know you're gonna you're gonna <laughs> do your job well, or you're not gonna have your job anymore. Oh, what else do we got? Connor Culp had a 49-yard field goal last year. We couldn't kick a field goal to save our – well, to get to a bowl game. And now we have a guy that's hit a 49-yard field goal. Does that make a – you know, are kickers really kind of a separate part of the team and nobody pays attention to the kickers? Or, or when he makes that 49-yard field goal, does it really boost the team's confidence that much? Uh, from – when we played, the kicker was a part of the team, and the kicker does boost your confidence, and it gives you confidence that even if we don't get seven, we're going to get three. But I played with Alex Henry and Brett Maher, so I remember uh, countless times after practice, Bo a lot, line the team up, and we're making noise. We're pouring water on the kickers, and we're just making them make hard, hard kicks in front of everybody. We stopped practice. Noise is loud. We put more people to block the kick than it's going to be in a real game. We have people standing behind and we're throwing water on them. And when the kick goes in after all the water spraying, all the yelling, all the things we're doing to the kicker, it's like we just won the national championship, the, the excitement and everything. So I don't know what how it is in their locker room, but from every team I've been on, the kicker is a huge part of this, a, a part of this team winning. And I was to always tell my wife, if I ever was a recruiter or a coach, the first thing I go do is get a good kicker. 
I, I go get a good kicker. That's the first thing I was do, man. Those three points go a long way or field position goes a long way. It doesn't matter. You can have a, you can have a decent offense and decent, decent defense, but if you have a good kicker, man, it, it, it just helps out so much. So they're more of a part of the team because you need them. You, you were throwing water on the kicker while he was trying to make a kick. Oh yeah, we are. Um, <laughs> we make a. I from being here with Bo Pelini, we made it hard as possible. We uh, I remember Bo. He's pulled water on the ball before the snapper snapped the ball. The holder couldn't wear gloves, so the ball is still wet from the holder. From us spraying water on the ball, uh, we got all kind of phone things hitting the kicker in the helmet. We got people <laughs> jumping up and down. We have a coach behind it. We're making it hard as possible. And when he knocked that thing down with water going everywhere and everyone going crazy, man, that, that I think that's what made me respect kickers and brought the team to respect the kickers a little bit more. Because like you said, they're a little bit more standoffish. They're not, they're not in Paul involved in team, like team practices, like the offense and defense. We practice against each other four to five periods a day. We don't have kickers around us. They have their own thing. So at the end of practice, to bring us closer to the special teams and kicker, I think it was great. It made the, it made their job a lot harder than it ever be in a game, and it let it gave us a chance to see what they do, and gave us a chance to gain more respect for them. So I, I that's what I do miss about being at Nebraska and being around good kickers like Brett Maher and Agus Heron. We used to try to make it so hard, and it was so effortless for those guys. I have never heard that. That's it's very interesting. Okay, honestly. Nebraska's first quarter started out like this was going to be like, uh, I don't know, 80, an 84 to 13 game. And then Purdue started slowly kind of e- e- eking back into it. Then they hit that 89 yard pass, right? Where two guys, oh, uh, both <laughs> our guys fell down. They get this bloody pass play right when you have them pinned deep. Did you think, that, did, did you think in your head, I, did you, well, here we go again. Did you yes, still have uh, confidence Nebraska was going to pull it out? Or, uh, I told you, I've, I've been in that situation. So I, I have the confidence, but every time it happens, it's like, here we go again. Here we go again. Every time, anytime we get up in a big lead on any team that I love, I never, I try not to celebrate because I know it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And when they started inching back and started coming back, I was like, like you said, here we go again. Here we go again. But who's going to make the play? Who's going to bring us back? But like you said, every time that happens, whether I'm playing the game or cheering for a game, you you get that in the back of your head, man. This cannot go down like this. I think yesterday went a long ways to determining on a very young team who its leaders are. Mm-hmm. And from yesterday's game, you what you saw was leadership from Adrian Martinez. And then you saw leadership on the defensive by side of the ball, especially in the secondary from like Cam Taylor Britt. Anybody else stand out to you? Yes. Uh, ben Stilly. I think I'm, I hope I'm saying it right. Ben Stilly. Uh, if you've been watching Nebraska football this entire year, it hasn't been the sacks. It hasn't probably been a tackles for a lot. It's been the pressure for me. It's been the constant way he plays hard. You can, if you look at anybody on our D line, he's the guy, who stands out for me and, and we follow on that D line. He he popped us off with a sack, I think. And like you said, Jojo is a guy, he's gonna show up every game, gonna show up. He's gonna constantly make those tackles. He's gonna run around. He's not gonna tuck his tail. He's gonna be he's gonna make you proud if you're a Husker fan watching Jojo play. Uh from my stats, like you said, Cam Taylor, Ben Steele, Jojo. As far as Williams, he had a couple penalties, but I just liked it the bully side that he played with. He he was hit, he was head butting out of the play. He was talking, and I think he he maybe led us in tackles. So he he talked to talk and walked to walk yesterday. So you you like that aspect? Does you the know, team I, need I, that guy? Uh, you have to have a guy like that on your team. You I don't, I don't say you I don't take it back. You don't have to have a guy like that on your team, but it's great to have a guy like that on your team. <laughs> if those are guys that you you love when they're on that team, but you hate them if you have to go against them. <laughs> so you, you have to have guys like that on your team because I, I say Eric Martin was more was more I got when we was here. Like if Eric wasn't on wasn't on your team, you would hate Eric Martin. But if he's on your team, yes, you're gonna love Eric. He's never gonna shut up. 
He's gonna. He doesn't care about the tackle. He just want to knock somebody out on special teams. He wants to hit somebody and get over and stand over and let their team know that their guy not got knocked out. And we 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 felt that energy that Eric Martin used to play when you need a guy like that. And he just all. It's just a team player that most of the time a guy's like that. It's for the team. Some people look at it as selfish. I I tried to be that guy before. Maybe I'm kind of like still is, but it's more of like. Follow me. I'll show you what we're here to do. <laughs> well, you know, that's a, I like the perspective. Uh, I feel like I can, you know, okay. I, I get that. If you don't have somebody like that, then, uh, you know, the, the guy's probably going to stand up for the other players if they're getting pushed around a little bit on the field too. And I, I can see where you'd need a guy to, I don't know, I, don't, I hate to say this, but if you're in an alley somewhere, you walked out of a bar, you always want somebody behind you. If some drunk guy's coming up to you. It, it, yes. Right? Yes. You it's get much it, so easier to, to be tough when you're there with somebody else than you looking at three guys by yourself going, yeah. how the hell do I get out of this? Yeah. So I love talking with you. You get it. I break it down to football terms. You give it to me from another life point, And we're basically saying the same message. So you get it. Not that I've ever been in that situation personally. It happens. Anyway, <laughs> is there is there anything else from yesterday's, yesterday's game that uh, you want to bring up that I haven't mentioned? Oh, like you said, uh, Purdue didn't try to run the ball, but we started for negative two. The passing, the pass defense. Uh, if you take away that eighty-nine yard ball, man, we it was two two quality receivers that we held in check. That should, that should give us some confidence, man. I, I wish we would have played a lot more closer earlier in the year. Uh, when I saw us come out in man, I'm going to tell you right now, I was a little nervous. I was a little nervous when I saw us come out in man against Bell and gets more. I was a little nervous. And I got confidence early in the game from Boodle. I saw him make a deep, deep down the field knock away. I saw him close in the hill. And I was like, man, we maybe can do this more. We should do this more. And as the game went on, just Cam Taylor Britt, that last breakaway, it just – I was here with Prince Amukamara and Afonso Dino. It was it was like I was there watching this. So, I, I don't know, man. That's about all I got. The team – it was a great – it was a great team win. The offense played good. The defense played good. We blocked the punt. We had a good punt return. How, how can you be mad? Well, that – that is true. That is a good point. How can you be, man? I mean, it was a double-digit double win. There were some negatives, but there's always going to be negatives in any game you're playing. Hmm. Anything positive? Let's end on something really positive. I know what my positive thought is. Talk to me. We now have, we now have as many wins as Wisconsin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's always good. That's always good. So if we're going to go with a positive like that, and – we have more than one win. <laughs> I don't know. We have two wins. I don't know. I read something about we maybe could get in a bowl game if we win this next. I don't know what has to happen. So I, I, whatever we need to happen to get in a bowl game, like Scott Frost said, those, those extra practices in the bowl game are so vital to a young team. And when I got here from junior college, I didn't start my first year. And we went to the Holiday Bowl, and I wasn't a starter, but I had those extra two weeks or three weeks to get ready for my senior year, I took my biggest steps then because all the seniors, they were trying to – we had a lot of scouts at the game. So it was Pierre, Allen, and somebody else I was going against. I was getting their best every day, and I wasn't a starter, and we wasn't going that hard. But we had three weeks into a game or almost a month. So it was almost like a camp atmosphere, and you get so much more better because you don't have to hold – you don't have to worry about hitting somebody. It's scrimmage-type football. And those are type, I don't know, man. I hope we get to a bowl game and those young guys can get an extra 20 practices, man. And spring ball, we just that much farther. Interesting thoughts. Okay, we're going to wrap it up there. Nebraska gets its second win of the season over the Purdue Boilermakers, 37-27. to 27. This has been the Yoshi Football Show. I hope you listen, and I hope you come back next week as we take on Minnesota. Fingers crossed. Uh, maybe Nebraska can pick up another win. All right. Thank you. Go Big Red, and thanks for listening.